This is my new a7 III. And this is the first camera that I ever purchased, the Sony a5100. To preface, although this video is about cameras, I don't want this video to just be for people who are into cameras and videographers. I want this to be for anyone who likes to create things, and I, I truly do believe that everyone is a creator, so this, I want this video to be for anyone who will listen. So everyone sit down, kick your feet up, because we're going to have a little chat. So as I said, this camera is the first camera that I've ever owned and bought with my own money, the Sony a5100. For a while, I've been shooting on the a5100, and I finally felt like it was time to switch and upgrade to the a7 III. For those of you who don't know much about cameras, basically the a7 III is an upgrade from this camera. It shoots in better quality, has a bigger sensor, everything that I need for what I am going to continue to do in the future. For a while, I've been wanting to upgrade from this camera, so I wanted this video to be me talking about why I upgraded from this camera to that one, as well as why I chose this camera specifically, as opposed to the many options that I did have. So why did I upgrade from this camera to that one? Well, for me and my personal work, I've been wanting to do more high level production work. I've been wanting to do more freelance work and more high level stuff for co online content creation, whether that be for Instagram, YouTube, whatever that may be. And the a7 III specifically works for me for convenience, my workflow, and it has some features that this camera doesn't have, hence making it more expensive, but also work for me better. Some of these features include shooting in 4K, having dual card slots, a viewfinder, uh, more buttons and dials, etc. Just many, many things that make it more convenient for me. So that being said though, why did I upgrade to this specific camera? Well, for me, I had many options going into this process. Some options included the EOS R, A7S II, the A7 III, and the A7S III. When I was first saving up to get this camera, I had narrowed down all my options to getting this camera, the A7 III. When I was about halfway through saving for this camera, a new camera came out the Sony a7S III. For those of you who know cameras, you already know the specs of the a7S III. For those of you who don't know much about camera, I'll talk about it in layman's terms. The a7 lineup was made for people who are hybrid shooters, people who shoot photo and video, and they do both really well. The a7S lineup, however, was made for people who shoot mainly video, and it does video really, really, really well. And considering that I'm mainly a video guy, the a7S III was really appealing for me and what I wanted to do in the future. So why did I get the a7 III rather than the a7S III, considering that it had more video first people in mind when it came to features, plus it's being a newer camera? Well, I was planning on getting the a7S III for a while. I had decided to change my saving plan and to save longer in order to get the a7S III. The a7S III had more video first features, it had a flip screen, full size HDMI port, it shot in ProRes 422, it shot in 10-bit color. Basically, it was a way nicer, newer, better camera. After a few months had passed, I had fully convinced myself that the a7S III was what I needed because I wanted to future-proof myself and I wanted to start my business with a camera that was really good so I wouldn't need a newer camera for a really, really long time. But one day I was, I was sitting and thinking there were a few things that I had to evaluate. Should I get the a7S III? Yes, I would make amazing videos, but my photo capabilities would be lacking. 12 megapixel photos from the a7S III as opposed to 24 megapixel photos from the a7 III, although I could make take really good photos with the a7S III, if I wanted to do client work, 12 megapixels just wouldn't do for photos. And although, yes, I am video first, I was hoping to dive more into taking photos and videos as for client work because I want to expand what I'm doing and I want to offer myself to more clients for, for more variety. Another huge thing to consider was the price. Yes, I had fully accepted that I was ready to save up more money and to get the a7S III, but saving up more money to get the a7S III would hinder me in the long run because it would take me more time to then later save up for better lighting, better audio, everything that I need to round out my kit to be a better filmmaker. I had fully convinced myself that this was not going to be an issue until I evaluated one more thing, which is what I want to talk to everyone about today. What finally pushed me over is why it's okay to settle. I put settle in quotation marks because in a lot of instances, of course, settling is not what you should do. You should always shoot big, but for specifically what I'm talking about today, it is okay to settle. Let's talk about my computer for a second. I didn't settle with that at all, and I don't regret my decision to not settle at all. I got the best of the best, and I've been able to make some really cool stuff because I'm not slowed down by the lack of, of good RAM or, or graphics processing, whatever that may be. On the other hand, getting the a7 III wouldn't hinder me. It wouldn't slow me down. 
In fact, it would open up more opportunity for what I wanted to do specifically in what I thought was best for my business. And take that advice with a grain of salt because of course I'm not making a living doing freelance at all. I'm just simply starting the idea of maybe starting a business here pretty soon. That being said though, I was reminded of what I made with little what I made with my A5100. This camera that was less than a fourth of the price of this camera right here. Like I said, I haven't made it by any means, but I was proud of the stuff that I was making with this camera. And shouldn't that be all that matters? Shouldn't you just simply be proud of the things that you're making rather than trying to shoot for getting the best of the best equipment? That will come when you first take a step back and realize that you're making amazing things with what you have. When you feel like you're making amazing work with what you have, then once you have those great things, then you can make even greater things. And I know that that's been said a million times before, but I think that my perspective in this is really valuable because I haven't really made it. It's easy for someone who's an accomplished cinematographer or YouTuber or whatever to tell you these things, but when it's coming from me, I think it's a valuable perspective because I haven't made it by any means. I'm not a popular YouTuber. I'm not a popular cinematographer. I'm not a popular director, whatever that may be. I'm just a 20 year old kid who thinks that I am proud of what I make and I want other people to be proud of what they make too, even without making a lot of money or making a living off of it. We were born into a generation of convenience, which is both a great and a terrible thing. The greatness of being in a generation of convenience means that you get the opportunity to learn how to do many, many things so well just because there are so many tutorials and ways online that you can learn how to do things. The hindrance of being born into the generation of convenience is that a lot of the times we can strive for so much because things are so easy to get. You can press a button on Amazon and things will get delivered directly to your door. You don't have to think about the purchases you're making. If you want something, you could truly and honestly, if you have the money, just press a button and get it. It could be a minute process between seeing something and deciding to buy it and then pressing the buy button and it being delivered to your door. That's why I love things like shooting on film because it causes me to sit back and tell myself to wait. You are crafted with glorious purpose, destined for impact. Failure to see that means you need to check in with yourself, not that you need a new camera. This stands true whether you're filming on a cinema camera or a film camera, whether you're, you're writing with a pencil and paper or on a nice computer. I needed to hear this more than anyone because I get obsessed with the newest and the best thing. I'm constantly looking up what new things are coming out in the cinema and, and video world. I needed to remind myself that sometimes it's okay to settle because sometimes settling will open up greater opportunity. For me, settling with getting this camera rather than the a7S III caused me more opportunity to use that extra $1,600 that it would have taken to get that other camera to round out my kit. Eventually, I'm going to get new lights and new audio, and that's going to be great for what I want to do. And I would be holding myself back by getting that new camera and not using that extra money I could have to put it towards other things to round out the things that I'm making. Settling with this camera also opened up the opportunity for me to be able to take better pictures as well. Something that I wouldn't be able to do if I had spent that extra money and gotten that new camera. But instead I'm settling and instead I'm not settling in the photo department and getting better pictures and being able to do more client work when it comes to photography. So take this with you. It's okay to settle because at the end of the day, it's not about what tools you have in your hand, it's how you use them. Something you've heard a million times before, but I want you to remember that I'm saying this not as some great success, but just as some guy who knows how important it is to just simply be good at what you're doing. Because I truly and honestly do believe that I'm good at what I do, even though I'm not making a living off of it right now. And even though I only have like 130 subscribers. It doesn't matter. And who am I to say all these things if I won't actually go out and do it? So here for the last time is a cinematic sequence shot only with this camera. Thank you, and I will see you with my eyes.